OK, so let's uh, proceed and try to re-implement our application using this uh, framework uh, given by the router. Um, so one way to go is uh, to open this app. And uh, let me just uh, start from, a, from an empty function app. And we will then populate it with uh, uh, the old components, uh, one piece at a time, so that we can follow. Okay. Um, so the old function app, uh, let's call it the old app for the moment, so that we keep it there and we can steal uh, elements uh, when we want. Okay. So the idea is that uh, we want to include into this pro into this project uh, also the router. So first of all, we must install the router in the, in the project, OK? So remember, uh, we are in uh, OK. <laughs> um, in this exercise 10, we need to install React Router Dev, uh, DOM. React Router DOM. And then we can restart the project. OK. Uh, at this point, uh, what we know is that uh, for uh, the router to work, uh, we should uh, wrap our entire application into a browser router component. So our application should be something like uh, return browser router and everything else in between. OK? Uh, we already have some wrapping to do. So let's see the old uh, return. We had a, lo uh, a lot of stuff here to do. And so we will uh, we'll merge them. First of all, let's import browser router. So we need to go above and say import browser router from React router DOM. Uh, it's probably like that. Okay. So we import the router and we wrap our application with the router. Uh, to do something easy, uh, we need to, this part, this header, let's try to merge with the old app. Okay, so the header is always the same, more or less, for the moment. And the main will, uh, okay, this part here should be probably redesigned. And this should be pa the part probably that uh, we have the routes on. So the idea is that let's uh, put all the application inside the router. Let's remove this. And see if it's working. So what I did is just to make a very stupid app with a nav bar and an empty container. And here we will put the content of the application. So let's see if it runs. Yeah, we have the nav bar and the XXX that I put uh, here in the container. Now, this code is always rendered. Then we want to selectively render some part of the code depending on the URL. OK? So the idea is that inside this container, the lower part of the page, we choose what to show. And so we put a, a routes. 
selector with several route elements, alternatives, alternative elements. Okay, so there is one route with path, for example, slash element. What do we need to render when we are matching sorry, the, the home page? And so on. Right? For the moment, we can. Let's try to match it like this or home page. So in this case, oh, I'm missing something because uh, route is not defined. Sorry, forgot to import the elements. So routes uh, from React Router DOM and route also from React Router DOM. So the import is now complete. Okay. If I save it, okay, you should see home page. And if I so this was sorry. in if the uh, path is slash, then I render this one. If the path is something else, it's an error. It's an invalid page. So let's add another route or anything else. Element is a page not found, for example, and the slash. So, if this is okay, if I write some other address, instead of getting an error or something like that, I, I get page not found. Um, for moving across pages, okay, of course I cannot, uh, I, I don't expect to be able to edit this uh, by hand. For example, in page not found, I would put a link uh, saying uh, go back to the home page, for example. Okay, so how can I create this link? With the link component that I mentioned before. So uh, this makes it for something longer than what we can fit here. So let me create a small file with a page not found. JSX found. JSX function page not found. Props, but there are no properties here. When we can render, let's return, sorry. Of course, uh, the message, the page not found, and another line where we have a link. Link to the home page. Just be careful because we have a link component coming from React Router, and another link component or something like that coming from React Bootstrap. Okay, let's pick the right one. Let's import the right one. To slash, and then uh, sorry, closing the quote. Home page. We export this component. Let's save it. Okay, very. Then you can make it better if you want. But uh, like in, with any switch statements, uh, it's, it's always nice to have a default case at the end. If nothing matches, uh, at least we render something. Otherwise, nothing would be rendered, so we would have an empty page, which is not nice to see. Uh, okay, so here we should render this component called uh, page not found. OK. 
Okay, now we are, this is a normal link, looks like a normal link, but if we inspect it in the HTML, we see that the browser, or the, sorry, that, that uh, there are some events associated with the link. So the click is actually, you know, handled by React and not by, by the browser. And uh, it's interesting that if I click on back to the home page, it looks like a click. Uh, I should be able to go to the home page. But have a look at the network panel here in the inspector. I'm on the home page and it doesn't do any network request. So it's not a normal link uh, where the browser will make a new request and now I get a new page. Okay? I can get to this page by making a request, of course, and it will load not just the page, but all the React library and everything I imported. Uh, but once it is loaded, I'm just navigating in, in internal pages, React pages, router, routes, actually. We are not navigating pages, but routes. That look like pages because they, uh, they update the address. Okay. Uh, there's a, um, a short short end for the home page, or in general for the main page of every section, because this may be should be inside a section called uh, I don't know uh, questions and answers slash, and then we have a list. Okay, this will only match the top root. So if you want to match the 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 root of a section, even in the case we are nesting routes. Uh, there's a shortcut which is called index. Okay, so uh, usually we can use index or slash to say the main page without any okay path extra path specification, and it's the same, of course. Now there are many uh, options in the route element. Then we know that the oh no, the, we decided where's here that the home page should contain a layout and navbar, and it does, and a list of questions. So let's maybe move to a, a component, create a very stupid component with a list of questions, okay? Um, like in the same as, way as before. Question list. Question list. Questions. JSX function questions list and we export it and we return Text for the moment. Okay, so this component, the list of questions, should be rendered in the home page. So in the app, instead of rendering uh, just home page like that, we can render these. Uh, Questions list. So I'm creating many small components for each uh, variant uh, so that we don't have a very big file with all the. We, man we keep the, the main uh, component readable. Okay, so this the home page should provide us. A list of questions with only one option to select one of the questions. So let's fake it, okay? Let's put something fake here in this list of questions to simulate the movement. Then we can generate them dynamically from the state. But for this first, it's my suggestion is always to start from something simple and then, so this list of questions may be 
and doing something really simple, a list of items, question one, and question two. And this should be selectable, so the user should be able to select this question and go to a detailed page. That means that, for example, we can create a link, again, to the page that contains the details of question one. So the list of answers of question one. What is the route? We already decided that. Should go to answers slash ID of the question. So we go to sorry, answers slash one. And we do the same with the second. Uh, two. is not defined, okay, always the same mistake. Okay. Question one, question two, we just, uh, it's just created by hand. But when we link here, the URL becomes uh, answers one or answers two. Of course, right now we have a page not file, we still have to define the route. Okay, so you can imagine generating these links uh, dynamically from a state variable containing a list of questions, like we do with other, everything else. So right now, we should implement uh, these route answers that will create, uh, sorry, where's the, our plan to implement all of this. Answers question ID. So let's, again, do a fake page, and then we'll pull in the components that we already have. Um, from here, so we define a route with a path of type answers. Column question ID. element, and then we should create an element for rendering that. It could be uh, answers list. Function answers list. Export. Okay, and we can render the answers list. Component here. So let's try to navigate it. So I define a dynamic path in this case uh, that will render this component. Which is here. If you see answer slash one is now correct, it's not longer page not found, the arrows in the browser are working. Hmm? This is automatically handled by the router. Um, one might, okay, question one, question two. How can this component, answers list, uh, know about the question? The question is, uh, 
The question number is part of the array. It's a question ID parameter. How can the component access the parameter? Okay. There is a hook for being able to extract the parameters that have been matched by the router when it selected that specific element. And this hook is called use params. They are called parameters. So properties, they are something in the object, in the component, and then the route gives us parameters, params. Don't confuse props, don't confuse props with, with, uh, with params. So in this case, we have one parameter. Uh, so it's something like that. The syntax is something like that. Param parameters equal to use params. You see that use params are hooked inside the React router library. And doesn't need any argument. It will just extract all the parameters that have been matched in selecting this specific route. So if we are, if this component is instantiated in a static route, for example, in the home page or in the, then it will have nothing inside. Uh, let's see in the console. Okay, if we go here. We see that when we are in this page, we have uh, the params object that is an object that contains one property, question ID, one. So question ID is the name of the parameter in the route definition. One is the value of the parameter in the actual location URL. So we are extracting this one and giving it the name question ID, which is the name that <coughs> we had in the route definition. It's an object. It may have many properties depending on how many raw fragments have been matched. One common way of using this uh, is instead of uh, extracting an object that contains properties, we already know which properties we are expecting normally. So we tend to do uh, to, to directly directly extract uh, from the object we extract the property we need. So I, uh, question ID. Use params. Hmm. So both, both are acceptable, of course. If we already know that the question ID is the parameter we need, that we can you know, use a destruction statement in which we are assigning, instead of the whole object, every single property of the object to, to individual variables. And so we can have the answer list to question number, question ID. And then maybe let's put a link to go back. Why not? Link, let's remember to import it to uh, slash. Something like this. So if you have a list of questions, slash question one goes to answer one, answer list to question number one. Back, question two, answer list to question number two. So we, have, we identify which component to render, and the component is able to extract information from the address. And back, we just go back to the list of questions. Okay. Of course, we need, should need some should give also some more properties to these objects. So the number, uh, the, the, uh, the state uh, with the question, a state with the answers will be needed. For now, we are just focusing on the on the navigation mechanism. Then, from the uh, list of answers, we have other actions to do. 
we, uh, for example, we need to show the list itself. So, uh, okay, let's make something very stupid. Answer one, answer two, three. And then we have another action to, to implement that is uh, add a new action. So we have the list of actions to show, and then we have an add and a back button. Add uh, should go to a page uh, containing the form for adding a new answer. And the uh, URL for this form is, uh, we already have all the information here. We are just implementing what we planned before. Answers, question ID. So how to create a link, uh, what is that? Answers list. Two, well, this, can, this is a dynamic string. So we can use, for example, a template. Uh, so an, a, a JavaScript object with a template uh, with, I already forgot, uh, add answer, question ID. Add answer, slash, and question ID is the, the variable that I just extracted. Okay, so here, I use I had to use a, a JavaScript block because I want to use string interpolation with a template literal. And just remember that the dollar sign is part of the template literal syntax. It's always confusing for me the JSX syntax for interpolation that has just braces and the string literal that has dollar braces. But anyway. So we are extracting the idea of the question and we are using it to pass it on to the next round. And uh, so it should add, add answer one. Of course, uh, the patent found is an error yet because the, the error doesn't exist yet. And so on. Um, and of course, we should also add some uh, actions to the to the questions. Okay, so we add uh, uh, what do we delete? Delete is very stupid because we don't need to change the route. It will be a button that calls some callback and then we stay in the same page. So we just a state change. So in this case. Uh, Uh, or the other is uh, uh, vote. Or oh, the interesting one for us is edit. That BA is like add in the same way. And we have edit. And the difference is that instead of calling add answer, we have an edit answer. Again, with the the question ID, but also the answer ID. In this case, one. Uh, it will be generated when, when you are generating this, uh, this list. Uh, it will be part uh, of the ID of the specific answer. And so if we repeat it for three, one, two, two and three. For example, of course it's incomplete. We need some real data, but just to understand how it works. So we are go back. Question two, and the edit will go to, for example, and edit answer two two. Two is the number of quest of the question, and two is the number, and the second two is the number of the answer. 
if I go back and select the first and try to edit it, it will go to one tree or one answer. Okay, so the add edit answer page will have all the information about which answer to edit and in reference to which question was that answer, what was that, that answer given. And so this has to be uh, implemented in some way. We need to implement, uh, we said that the, um, so this is a fake implementation of the answer list. And we have now the add answer and then the data answer forms. Let's uh, create a a component for those. And that answer can extract from the parameters, again, const uh, the question ID from the parameters of the router. Then here we have, we have two buttons, one for adding and the other for canceling. Right now, I only did links, okay? Uh, let's see maybe what how to implement uh, navigation with uh, buttons. The link element is, is okay if you only want to create a link, but if you want to create something more sophisticated like a button with some other action, how can we do that? So for example, we, we change this, the implementation of this, instead of having, sorry, just links, uh, we, we put two real buttons, okay? and see how we, we handle that. So it's a div. And in the next line, we have the two buttons, a button for really adding, and another for canceling. So like any button, we need a, uh, some handler to decide what to do. Uh, so, for example, a handle add. Uh, I'm sorry, equal to event function and the const handle cancel event callback. So we can on click and we'll add nothing new here, okay? So what should we do in uh, cancel? In cancel, we should just go away. No? We are in the add form, so imagine you have a form to answer the question. You click on cancel, you should close the form and go back to the list of answers for this question. So we should just go back you know, here to answers question ID. Uh, sorry, yeah, this one. Answers question ID is the same. One way of navigating is using a link component. Another way of navigating inside some code is using another hook, which is called navigate. Okay, so in the React router, there are two hooks that we are using, use param, param and navigate mainly. And how do you use it? Well, just uh, it gives us a function to call. 
So when we need to navigate uh, in sequential code, we use the navigate const navigate equal to use navigate. It's a hook that always gives me a function. It's the same function. So I can call this function. And whenever I call this function, <coughs> the parameter of the function is the two, is the destination. So there's navigate to answers. So OK, we need to be parametric with the question ID. And the same is the handle add that should uh, do the real add. And then navigate back to the list of questions to close the form. OK, so in this case, we are add. It's not found, OK, because I didn't link it in the home page. So I should define a route for a path add answer with the parameter of question ID. The element to render is add answer. OK, so let's go back to the home. Select a question, select add. I have these but two buttons. And when I, click, when I click on either of them, they are doing the same thing right now, I am back here to the list of answers of the question number one. If I go back and select question number two, add, I go back to the list of number two. We always remember, OK, the number of the question. The interesting part is that if I write uh, add answer, Three, for example, it will. So I'm jumping on a link directly to this uh, address. It will create me the page. It will load the application and navigate immediately the application to that um, path, to that route. So now I'm not forced to start the application from the beginning. I can start from any route, and the system will uh, render the application like that. Of course, we should, we should be careful. Right now, there is no state. We should be careful that the state should be initialized correctly in the different components. Okay, but in general, managing the state is quite automatic in React. And if I go back, uh, I go back to the list and so on. Okay, so this is the general framework. Uh, we have these a few let's say, um, special cases that I show you by example. The, the, a route called index instead of a path. Uh, so they match when uh, no other more specific rules are matching, the index uh, will match. The asterisk that can be used as a default case. And uh, uh, the two options for navigating, using link or using the navigate function given us by the use navigate. Uh, just a warning, uh, navigate is a hook. Why is that? Navigate is a hook, so it must be called at the top level of the component. And one mistake I often do is that, okay, I need the navigate function here, let's use, you cannot write this instruction here, inside the function. Because hooks can only be, be called, remember, hooks are special functions that store data uh, in, uh, alongside the component instance. And so the component should always know exactly which data are being created by the hooks. So the hooks should always be the first things that the component does outside of any conditional or any function or any loop. So if you try to do like this, okay, I only need the navigator function here, so I will 
obtain it here, it doesn't work. It will give you an error. Okay? But the error is quite uh, explicit. It will tell you you cannot call a hook from inside the function, something like that. So it's easy to correct. Hmm? Something. Sometimes it may happen to, to forget that a hook is a special beast, but the error messages will. Uh... These are the two mechanisms for navigation. Don't use a normal link. Don't use, OK, we will never do the normal action for submitting a form. A normal link with, uh, will, you know, uh, destroy and recreate the application because the browser will reload the new page. It will seem to be working. But it will be much slower because the application has to be recreated and reloaded from scratch. And maybe you can, you, all the state will be reinitialized. Maybe it's not what you want. Okay, so be careful with that. If I had put, a, let's see it uh, practically. Uh, for example, uh, where we have uh, instead of a link, uh, and uh, let's put another backlink uh, just with a with an anchor. And it works, of course. Thanks to this mechanism. Okay, if we go here, where is the application? Back goes back to the list of questions and then again. If and we see that in the network panel, nothing is happening, okay? It's all internal navigation, internal state management. If I click here, I will go to this question, but you see that, uh, you saw that everything has been reloaded. Okay, so always keep an eye there. If something's reloading, you forgot to have a link, to have a proper navigation inside the router, okay? And you're making yourself some damage. Um, okay, there are, these are details. Okay, the parameters already show them how to extract that value, use params. So what we did in the example is here also explained in the, um, in the slides. Um, okay, I will, I will skip this for, for, for the future, the passing location state. Just to show you this, uh, well, this summary slide uh, about uh, what we need to know mainly about the router components. There's still one that we want to mention is outlet. Okay, and then we spend, uh, I will spend five minutes to show you the, the, the whole application completed <coughs> in the other, <coughs> sorry, the other project. Um, why do we need this outlet? Outlet is something that uh, is used uh, when we have uh, nested routes, like this. We have a route that contains other routes. So let's say the home page is we are matching the home page, or we are matching one section of website, another section of website, but then inside this section we have many pages. So every section should have a common structure and then some specific detail different from page to page. And these specific details are, of course, rendered in these elements. But maybe these elements should be included in a specific layout that depends on the section or on the page. So when you have nested routes, in the external routes, the element you specify is an element that will have some holes. So I cannot, this, okay, when I imagine this section of the website, I render this component. But then this component will be customized by the specific page. How can I do this customization? Well, in the definition of the component for the section, let's say, we have a placeholder called the outlet. And inside this outlet, the router will insert the routes matching the children. Okay? 
So we are uh, rendering a general layout of the page with a hole inside. And the hole will be filled by the inner matching route. If it makes sense to you. And we can do the same here. Because, for example, if we go into app, if we go into app, we have a very, well, we have a mixture. We have the browser router, all the routes, but all of the navbar and header and stuff. So it would be better to separate the routing structure of the application from the structure, layout structure of the page. So what we could do is to say, let's match everything with a top-level route, and this top-level route will apply the layout of the page. And then the internal, the specifics of the, maybe the bottom part of the page, the main part of the page, will come from a nested route. In practice, we could create uh, maybe a component that we can call a layout. that can return the main part of the page. So I copied from, uh, OK, we need a, a container. So we contain the header part with all the nav bar and the main part with the actual content of the page here. The actual content will be specified by the routes. So we, this is the, the, the general template of the, of the page for all the pages of our website. We define it once, and then we have a placeholder outlet for the inner content of the table. So we created just this component, the frame with a hole inside. So that in the application, we can throw away most of what we have and say, OK, we want to render inside routes, sorry, the first route which renders the layout. Uh, a route that always matches. So I don't specify any path. It will always match. And we render the element uh, layout that is just defined below. And this route so always matches. Yeah, I could do it so that it matches only some portion of the website. But in this case, and inside this route, I have some nested routes that will be selected to fill the outlet. So, you see it's very clean. In the app, we only have the routes. These routes are defining pages where we have a, I have a component for the general structure and a different component for the content. The general structure is in this layout component that is independent of the specific page. It works for all the pages. And let's see if it still works. Yeah, we should not be able to see any differences. That's the good of nested routes. You can reuse parts of the page, put them into separate components. <laughs> if you want to change the layout of the application, just change this component, you don't need to to modify the logic. There's a very clean separation. Uh, it's important that the layout component contains uh, an outlet, otherwise uh, all the other routes will never be rendered. Or they'll be re rendered but not be inserted in, in any part of the page. Imagine that instead of outlet here, you are inserting this one of these routes, the selected one. 
Okay, so these are the main points. Right now we are an application that uh, contains all the navigation options that we are we want to be able to access. Of course, it doesn't do anything. Hmm? We should have some more time to replace all these dummy components with real ones, uh, working with the state and so on. Okay, this is what we did. Uh, with, uh, what I did yesterday. Just want to show it the, the final result. Well, I have, uh, let's go to the home page. I played a bit with the CSS and made cards with the different questions. I click on details. I see I reuse the same components as before, but I need to, to change uh, the navigation. These buttons will have, are, I have a navigate call. I go to edit, I have edit answer, four to question two. I can modify, I can save it, uh, it's been changed, and so on. I can go back to another question. So all the functions before, right now, uh, now is able to handle more than one question. I have to modify a bit also the answer object to add an attribute called question ID, so that an answer will remember which, car, which question it comes from. So there was, there's a bit of work to do. Okay, that's why we cannot do it uh, together. But it's just adding state and behavior. Uh, I reused basically all the, all the components. I had to redefine the different handlers, handle add and so on. That's why I made this uh, simple components uh, with, uh, sorry, with, uh, with all the handlers here. So that we can handle them inside the component and then call with the props uh, the, uh, the actual uh, function from, from above from the state uh, managing components. Okay, so the props will be for will be used for passing the state to the component that need it, and to, for passing the uh, the callbacks, of course. While the mode or the customization is uh, implicitly handled automatically by the router. Okay, so maybe if you want, you can have a look at this final solution while you try to to come up here with your own. From next week, uh, we will start working on the server side mm -hmm. so that we can load finally some data, some real data instead of, uh, from the database instead of uh, fake data from the JavaScript code. Okay? Thank you.